Welcome. Today we're going to go over how to add this JavaScript library autonumeric into Oracle Apex. So that when you're typing in number fields, you're forced to type in a number and you can't put in uh, like a, a letter. All right. So yeah, if that's uh, what you're looking for, uh, stick around and we'll kind of go through the steps of how we import this. There'll be uh, chapters in the video, so feel free to jump around to specific sections. Now let's jump over to the Apex side. We'll see the before and after just so you can see what it's actually doing. So. On the left side, we have a before, which is just a basic numeric field in Oracle Apex. And then after is where we integrate it autonumeric. So for the whole number, as you can see, when you type in like a, a full number here and you hit space, it, it does auto format based upon the format mask. I can put in numbers, but then if I put in letters, they do come through here. And then you can put a decimal as well. So th this isn't the best user experience. Uh, same thing for the numbers. If you just type in uh, only numbers, it will format it correctly. But if you say backspace, type in like a number and a letter, it's not going to format it to a dollar since it's not like a valid number. Uh, same idea for the decimal number here as the other ones. And just kind of put in letters and numbers. So the, the validation still occurs when you do the page submission on the validation side, but... Prior to that, you can still enter bad data, and then you'll have to hit save, get the validation error, and then come back and fix it. So if we hit save here, you'll see that it does come back and say it must be a valid number, but we, I think we just want a little better user experience there. So on the after side here, we'll type in a number again. It does format it. And then see the keyboard. We're typing in a bunch of letters nothing's coming up as you can see that the autonumeric is working properly same thing for numbers we're gonna type in a bunch of letters and nothing happens and then now we're typing in numbers and it's not happening because it's a dollar field it limits it to two decimal places and then same idea for the three decimal places it's working properly with the autonumeric where it's forcing the specific number and then it's not letting you put in any invalid characters. And this also works for the interactive grid. So if we come down below here, we can, so if we're over here on the new salary, you can put in just the letters. But again, this one does have like the, the validation as you like type it in, but it still doesn't like block you from it. But then on the other side here, Try to type in some letters, doesn't work. The first step what we're going to do is download the autonumeric uh, code. How we're going to do that is just Google autonumeric min.js. There's going to be this GitHub repository with autonumeric min.js map. So you're going to click on that one. And then if we go back into the autonumeric directory, you'll see that there's the different versions here. We're gonna wanna just go to the latest version. So we'll go to the 4.9 for now. And then what we're gonna do here is just download the autonumeric min.js file. So once that file is downloaded, we're gonna go into your application, go into shared components. Then we're going to the static workspace files. And then here we're going to create a new file and we're going to import that min.js file we just uh, we just got. And then we're just going to add a directory. You don't need to do this, but we'll just do that to separate out the different uh, like features we have. Hit save and then you'll have that file added in. And then, so what you're going to do is copy this reference here. So the workspace files, autonumeric, just so you can have that and reference it in your code. After you import that file and it exists in the workspace files here, we're going to go into the application side and let's just go into a new page. This is going to be the, just a single page approach right now. Uh, so you go on your page, the page details here on the right side. So just click on like the top page one. It'll scroll down to the JavaScript section where you have the file URLs. And that's where you're going to want to paste the, the reference that we just copied. And so let's save that now. So now the page references that JavaScript file. So the next thing we're going to do is set up a dynamic action on page load so that when the page loads, the autonumeric library is integrated within the Apex fields. So we're going to go to dynamic actions here on the, on the left tab. 
we have page load, right click, create dynamic action. Let's just name it. And uh, the one is when it's page load. We're not gonna have any conditions currently, so we'll just go to the true action. So here, what we're gonna do is run some JavaScript code. So if we go to execute and then execute JavaScript code here. And so in this section here, basically what we're doing is grabbing elements by class name. And then we're gonna loop through those elements in the field and then and then initialize the autonumeric uh, class. So we'll just start with the dollar field as the first example. So what we're gonna do is do a, a variable dollar fields which equals <coughs> which equals this dollar field class. And then we're gonna loop through. So for each so for each dollar field class, we're going to do a new autonumeric, and then what we're going to do is grab that specific field here with the dot item. And then after that, the next thing we're going to be adding on is the configuration. So to get like specific configuration needs you have, you can go to their website at autonumeric.org, and then there's this slash configurator. And so as you type in And so, with this, and so with this page here, you can type in, like, click on specific uh, settings you want here, and then that can uh, create your code for you. So if we allow decimal padding, never, and so on. So you can kind of mess around with this if you want, like, two decimal places. And say you want a comma delimit or a dot character. And so you can see that it kind of appends here. So that's the next thing that we're adding on to our code. And for us, the configuration we're using is we're going to be doing a dollar sign currency symbol. For the digit group separator, we're using a comma. Decimal character is a period. And so the empty input behavior is a zero. So if there's nothing input it, it's just going to end uh like default to zero you can change this to something else as you need and then there's a the modify value on wheel so we were having some uh so we were having some complaints that's the number was changing if you were like scrolling on the page so we disabled this here we also added this watch external changes this way if we change it uh the field like dynamically it would be formatted. So that, those are the configuration options we have for the dollar field. But again, you can change this as needed. We're gonna close that off. And then the last thing we're gonna do here is just set the default value to the value. All right, so with this, we have the dollar field set up. So we're gonna grab this class name here, hit okay. And then let's run the page just as a quick test. Again, so that, that's working properly and we have the issue here. So to fix this one over here on the before, let's go into the application. And another quick way to get in, you can do quick edit. And quick edit this dollar item. And so with these fields, what we have is the type number field. And we have the form of mask already in place. <coughs> And so the next piece for this autonumeric is to add in the advanced section in the CSS class that we created in that dynamic action. So let's just paste that dollar field uh, value in the CSS class. So as you can see in the before, we have that dollar field. Let's just save that. And if we hit run, let's enable that camera one more time. And as you can see, the autonumeric is working here now. But if you have any specific questions, feel free to leave a comment in the chat. But it's the same idea, so it's just kind of appending. So if we like copy this and just paste it, you'll be able to do like a whole field, whole number field there. And we can do like whole number field. And I'll copy that. 
And so the main difference that we're going to have here is just like the, the configuration options. Update these variable names to match. And then if we hit OK, save, and then if we hit save, and then for the whole number field on this side, let's go over here. Go into the advanced and then CSS classes. If we hit save here, run this again for testing. As you can see, it's working properly. So yeah, that's uh, how you inter integrate AutoNumeric. We have this working on a single page now where it's auto formatting the numbers uh, with the AutoNumeric. So to make it more of a global solution, we're going to move it over to page zero and then include the file into the app files. So to do that, what we're going to do is go into the page one again, where we have that dynamic action set up. We're just going to right click it and then we're going to go copy to other page. Let's go page zero. It's going to be the same event. All right, so then we're going to delete this one. And then the next piece where we're going to do is copy this JavaScript URL. We're going to delete it, hit save. And then just so you can see that it's broken right now, if we run this page, we'll see that you can type in uh, letters there. What we have to do next is add in that URL. So we're going to go to application, go into the application definition, go into user interface. See the JavaScript file URLs. We're just going to paste that there. Hit apply. And then for page zero, let's just go in there. And so for this specifically, it's running on all pages, but you can put in a server side condition uh, if wanted, but I'm not sure if the speed nor performance is affected if you have this running on every page, even if there's no associated class fields there. Okay, so with all that set up, we'll go back to page one and rerun that. You'll see that we're typing in letters now, but you can only allow numbers. So it is working now with the global solution of it on being on page zero and then adding that min.js into the app, into the application definition. And just to show you that, that that's working properly, let's just go into like a different page. Say, uh, if we wanna go into page two, and then let's add on a new page item. Let's do like a dollar test. We're gonna go into number field I'll go down to advanced and then if you use the class uh, in places and then you click on the CSS you should be able to see what other ones are available so what we're going to do is type in the dollar field since that's the one we're using it on and then we're going to do format mask hit save Let's run that page down below here. You can see that it's not working currently. And that's because on page zero, we don't have the page two enabled on the uh, page load item here. So we can do a comma and then two and that will work. Or we can just remove this as well. So we're gonna remove it, reload the page. And you can see that it's formatted automatically and we have the... Now the, the one caveat that we're working with here is when you're doing the submission that you're gonna have to do a replace if you're in the, uh, like the PLS SQL code and you run the SQL. Uh, now if you're in the 
PLS field code and you're saving it to a number field. We have these for places in here to remove the commas and the dollars.